Welcome to another episode of Inquiring Minds. I'm Steve Harper. With me, as always, is my amazing and incredible co-host, Donna Carlin. Donna, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. And how is my amazing co-host, Steve? I am doing fantastic. If I was any better, it'd be illegal. So <laughs> I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> You're like, uh, okay. <laughs> maybe that's just a phrase we use here in the States. I don't know. Maybe that's, that's different for you, you know, up there Possible. in Canada. Yeah. In the winter wonderland of Canada. Do you have a lot of snow up there right now? We're supposed to get a dumping over Ooh. like tonight through to Friday. So, yeah, we're waiting for another storm to hit, which evidently is going right across the United States as well. So, yeah, yeah, what we're say? getting an inch yeah. of ice and the entire state of Texas is freaking out right now. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, it's this, the yeah. ice apocalypse. It's like, you know, relax, everybody. It's just it's just. And yeah, people, people that fast. live in those kinds of climates just laugh at us because it's just, it's yeah. funny. But, well, what are we talking about today? This is going to push a bunch of buttons, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can't outsource personal change or growth. Oh, you can't? Nope. Dang it. That's why I'm not growing. <laughs> I can't delegate this away. You mean I can't do that? You can't, you can't delegate it. You can't outsource it. Yeah. You, you know, I, I see so many people, especially in my field, which is mind boggling, take course after course after course and not implement anything. They are like yeah. um, serial course takers. You know what I mean? It's like, let's take the next course and the next um certificate and and the next one and the next one so i could show a list of credentials but they're not implementing any of it yeah and yeah. um and, you know there's that and there's also i have some clients mm. who are brilliant they are unbelievably brilliant mind-bogglingly so they could have three conversations going at once and expect that others could follow them but besides that i could teach them things and and skill sets and everything else they intellectualize them and then they park them and continue on doing what they've always done before mm. because intellectually they've processed it but they haven't integrated any of that learning into their everyday lives you can't outsource it by thinking if i take another course or have another coaching call that change will happen on its own yeah. you need to have buy-in that the change will serve you in some way and implement it, test it, like beta test it, see what works for you, play with it, and then, you know, continue to integrate other change until you continue to grow, learn, and become more of who you are. Um, but so many people think that change happens outside. It's everyone else's fault that I'm yeah. doing this, or, you know, it's the company's fault because of the way they're doing things. And they, they tend to place blame outside themselves without taking any ownership of the, the status quo themselves. So I'm going to park it there and ask you, how have you seen this show up and have you dealt with it? You know, I, I, uh, I have a couple of good friends that actually are uh, guilty as charged with this. They won't take much by way of coaching or, or helpful nudges in the right direction. They are perpetually taking, you know, classes or going through certifications. And like you said, they're, they're increasing their knowledge and their, their, um, their own personal understanding of key, you know, key areas, subject matter areas. They're becoming subject matter experts, but very rarely are they actually implementing it. They're not leveraging it for their own career paths. They're not putting it to practice for their own work or for their own companies. Or in the case of, you know, coaches, like you said, some of these folks are, they're amassing this great arsenal, but, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. And so it's one of the things, in fact, recently had a conversation with a good friend of mine who's gone through several of these certifications. And I, I asked them what they're doing with it, because the time and the level of commitment that they've put forward, it's significant. And many of these things are not cheap, right? So, so how are you say. applying it? Yeah. What's that? Expensive. Yeah. Very it's expensive. Exp yeah. Very expensive. And so I asked this gentleman, you know, who is fairly new to the coaching world, but keeps, they're in a program that keeps putting new stuff out, you know, and it's like, you know, it's, 
as the, there's a great resource of information for them, but until you start implementing and executing on some of what you've already learned, you're not really adding the value. And then, you know, if you think about it from a realistic perspective, you're taking in this knowledge of one program, and then you're immediately jumping into the next program without actually putting to practice anything that you just learned in the prior program, you're going to lose some of that motivation and momentum that uh, you really should be able to carry forward from that first, you know, certification or that class that you just took. And so I think one of the things that I, I shared with this friend of mine, Greg, that you've got to take it and then you got to implement it because you got to use it. And, you know, there's there's the old adage that you learn it, then you apply it, then you figure out, like you said, play with it, you know, understand what's working, what's not. Maybe a particular strategy or idea based on how you learned it may or may not apply for your environment or for what you're doing. And this could apply to any skill. It doesn't have to be coaching. It doesn't have to be, you know, just leadership. It could be anything. But then you find your own cadence with it. You figure out what what works for you. And that allows you to sort of, okay, I've got that now in my experience bag. I can put it, you know, now I want to build on that, you know, so I go apply it and then I teach it. I show somebody else, you know, in some capacity. That's where I think that a lot of people get stuck. And, and what I find interesting about this topic is what you're really talking about is that you're utilizing that as a crutch and an excuse to not really do anything. You are maybe amassing some great knowledge and experience, but knowledge without sharing is is pretty useless. You know what's fascinating? You know, you you talk about the expense of that. There's a double expense. One is the cost of these courses. Another thing is the cost of you not going in and implementing those skill sets yeah. because you're in another course, so you're you're not recouping that money or making any money um, at the same time. That but money aside. It goes to what are you bringing to the table? That's the bottom yeah. line. You know, I remember um, having a conversation with my son about what he wanted to do as a career set. And we looked at who do you want to impact? What is it that you want to bring to the table? Hmm. What What is the, um, the um, approach that you want to take to the work that you want to do? And let's reverse engineer your education to get you there. Yeah. We didn't start off with, I'm going into law and therefore I'm going to do this, this, and this, and I might morph to this. Yeah. We looked at, this is what I want to do. So how could I be not, I hate to use the word marketable, but what is unique about my approach? Well, if I combine this education and this education, that combination will bring yeah. a perspective that they don't normally get yep. from, from most people. And because of that, he's been able to literally design the career that he wants and, and choose the jobs because he's headhunted all the time. And uh, that's the place to be, to take courses for the sake of saying, I have 15 different cert certificates under my belt without using any of them or without using anything specifically from them is not going to get you work and it's not going to get you um, positioning in your field yeah. because nobody other than on your resume when it comes to the interview and the execution of the work, if you get the job, they're not going to look at the certificates on your wall. They're going to see what are you implementing that is actually doing an amazing job. Yeah. That's the bottom line. All those certificates aren't going to make a difference. So again, you can't outsource personal growth, which means yeah. you need to figure out how do I want to grow? What will I commit? We talked about in the previous week, making a commitment and no, not having a caveat to, yeah, I'm going to try this or don't try hope that. for it. Yeah. Don't hope for the or outcome. Hope for it. Yep. That's yep. right. Um, so, so now you're looking at what are you going to commit to? What is the impact that you want to make? How do I back that up with my own personal growth and learning? And how do I, um, it's more than commitment. How do I own my approach? So in other words, if change has to happen, it's not all going to come from the outside. You can't say my world would be perfect until every other person in my life is going to change and, and serve me. You need to figure out how you fit into that equation. And that growth has to come from within. So it's the commitment to growing. It's recognizing that everything you, you learn is useless unless you put it to good use yep. and that you choose that learning wisely to be able to give you multiple perspectives and approaches 
to fixing, you know, wicked problems, messy problems, because that's what life is these days. And also recognize that the world isn't perfect and there is no perfect time. There is no one day things will be great. No, you deal with now through commitment and honoring that commitment. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, uh, I think that's a very powerful way to look at it. You know, I was thinking about early in my career, I started in, in a, in a, in a role that didn't really have um, a sales application to it. And I was this young person, you know, just graduated high school, got an opportunity to work for a company. And I was leveraging some skills that I had, had learned in school, but I had taken the step forward to really understand how databases worked. And this is early on, right, as computers were really starting to become prevalent. And I remember the boss that hired me, hired me as a supply delivery guy, right? You know, so, you know, pick up your orders, go deliver them for us, come back, get more. And, you know, that's how you did it. And I, I recognized a pattern that was happening was that we had certain customers that were going through more supplies than they probably should have been. And I mentioned it to him, you know, that maybe it would be interesting to chart that. And you needed some data points in order to figure out, hey, do we have the right piece of technology for them that they're using? Or are they maybe ready to, you know, upgrade because their volume is increased? Do we know about their business, how they're using these things? Or, you know, every time they just, you know, thought the page looked a little light, they needed new toner. <laughs> so, you know, I asked this question and here I am like 18 years old and, you know, he's, he's asking me, well, well, how would we do that? Right. You know, we look at every time they reorder. I said, well, I think it'd be interesting if we charted it out. And, and in order to do that, you got to have, you know, kind of the database of what they have, who they are, how often they order. And, you know, you've got to have some ability to kind of, you know, plot these things in, with a, a foundational understanding. And I remember after doing it for about two months, he said, where did you learn this? And I said, well, I learned it in school because there were things that I recognized in my own behavior and my own patterns back, you know, in high school. If I wanted to get better at tennis and be a more you know, better player as, uh, you know, for the tennis team, I had to go out and practice. And when I practiced, I had to do certain things continually. And in order to, you know, maximize particular skill sets that I wasn't particularly good at, I had to continue to put more time and effort into it. It's easy to do the things you're really good at, but if you're, you know, looking at your complete game, you know, so I started marking these things out and then going home and putting it in my computer and kind of started to see my trends. And I would look at, you know, my wins and, you know, less losses. And, and I said, it's kind of the same thing here, right? You're, you're looking at and trying to get a baseline understanding of, of where you are and where you want to go and how you can adapt. Uh, and he looked at me like, you know, you didn't go to school for this. And theoretically, you didn't go to school. You don't have a computer science degree. You don't have any of this, but here you are programming this data for us. And I just remember at that point, had I not actually stepped up to actually open my mouth and use some of what I had learned, but more importantly, what I had learned and then what I had taught myself, because I applied it, I used it, and then I was able to attribute it into a scenario that had nothing to do with what we were talking about at work, but how I leveraged, here's where I was, here's where I wanted to be, and what I needed to do in order to get there. We ended up figuring out that we had some customers that really needed to have a conversation and, and, and add more capacity for what they were doing because they were kind of killing us in terms of cost and, you know, expense in, in terms of supporting them. It's kind of a long, you know, com convoluted way to explain, but really that was what you're talking about in terms of knowledge, how you take it, how you build it, how you do adapt it for your own purposes and then figure out how to go apply it. And if you can apply it in a way that allows you to teach it to somebody, you've really given some value. And, and I think that it, it becomes easy just to absorb, especially in today's world where people can just get on YouTube and let's watch all these different how-to videos about whatever. But are you really benefiting yourself on any level if you're learning a skill or you're developing that knowledge resource, but you're not applying it? That's it. And you also have to figure out, how do I get out of my own way? How do I <laughs> yes. actually admit to myself that change is necessary and to intellectualize that change is one thing, but to show the world that I recognize that, you know, there's, there's a lot that's not perfect about me that I could ramp up and do better and be eager to be able to ramp up and do it better shows that I'm going to own that change that needs to happen rather than try to outsource it 
to other factors and other people and other situations and everything else. Yeah. So what you did was the first step that, that I heard in this scenario is you admitted that you weren't the perfect tennis player. Yep. And you, you looked at what you did well and you looked at what you didn't do so well and, and how practice made it better. So, uh, and you were practicing the right things. That's a whole other conversation. Yep. You could practice the wrong thing, you could practice, you know, the right things and get better. So, you know, looking at that from, from that perspective is also key. The bottom line is we own the change that we need to see. We own the change that we want to see. And until that ownership is in place, nothing changes and don't expect a different outcome. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And, you know, you, you've, you said something early on, you got to know what that outcome is that you're looking for. Right. Very, That's right. you know, just like what you did with Michael was, you know, Hey, let's, let's reverse engineer this to figure out what we want to do to get to where we want to go. And that's, I think a lot of times, and especially if you find yourself as, you know, if you're a listener to the podcast or you're watching this on YouTube and, and here and Donna and I talk about it, ask yourself, what was the last thing I learned and how have I applied it? What was my reason and my motivation for going through that class or that certification or going that degree path or whatever? And is there a way that I can take what I experienced and what I learned to benefit myself now? Yes, you can go learn more about it or you can take another class or another certification. But before you do that, let's make sure that you get the ROI on the time investment, maybe the cost investment on whatever it is. Let's make sure that we, uh, you know, fully exhaust that before we go on to, to try and, you know, pour more knowledge into the, the, the brain a little bit. That's it. And the second part of that is ask yourself, why am I going into this field? You know, often people will say, I'm great with numbers, so I, I might as well become an accountant. Yeah. Or I'm great with people, so I might as well go into HR. I'm, I'm just using these as, yeah. you know, examples, although I'm not going to go deep into either example because that's not going to be pretty. So, um, <laughs> you, you know, thinking about that is, is it's the I might as well do this because I'm told that I'm great at it. If you don't align what you're going into with a passion that you have, it doesn't mean you're going to be good at it, you know, because you're, you're going to regret some of your decisions. The reverse engineering approach to, to education and to job hunting and everything else is what are you passionate about that you want to bring to the table? And we could talk about that in another episode to align with your passions. Cause I think yeah. that's really important. We're looking at that in a program we're revamping is, you know, discover your passion and then how do you align with that and what do you do with it? Um, it's not always what you're bringing to the table. If you say you're great with numbers to be an accountant, it's what is the impact you're going to have on people that's going to give you that sense of satisfaction and it is going to be an accountant the way to do it. Yeah. So, you know, there's multiple ways of looking at things, figure out who you want to impact, how you want to impact them then reverse engineer how you're going to get there and you're going to be much uh more on your your path to leading a, a life of fulfillment which is you know the critical piece here yeah you'll be happier you'll contribute more and when you contribute and others benefit from this knowledge you've amassed or you've obtained and you're now sharing it to benefit them in some capacity personally or professionally you're now contributing at a level that makes you feel like that time of investment, what that knowledge and experience that you've amassed really has payoff. And that's kind of key, I think. So that's right. th this has been a great, great conversation, you know, that we would love to hear from our audience, you know, whether you're listening on the podcast platforms or you happen to catch this video on YouTube or Facebook, we would love to hear what you think. So drop us a comment if you can. I know the podcast platforms don't offer that, but if you happen to, you know, jump on, you know, YouTube, our channel, uh, Inquiring Minds, or on our Facebook group, um, Donna, how do people get involved in that community so we can continue these conversations and, and hear some perspectives on it? Join our community on Facebook, as Steve said, at uh, Inquiring Minds with Donna Carlin and Steve Harper. And tell us what you want us to talk about, what you're you're getting from our shows it's it's really a great platform to have an ongoing conversation. Email us through our websites, steves at ripplecentral.com. 
I'm at DonnaCarlin.com, Carlin with a K. And uh, you can email us, find us, our social media through that. And then be a part of the conversation. Let us know what you want us to continue the conversation in and what your insights are, because we would really appreciate it. Absolutely. And and we, we are just so grateful that you tune in. And, and we enjoy having these conversations. We enjoy putting some, you know, not always easy topics to talk about, right? You know, some things that, you know, you wouldn't ordinarily experience in other in other podcast shows, there's not much fluff here. Right? <laughs> there is right. some solid, you know, conversations, and, and we put together some really interesting topics that are, are often not top of mind, but they should be. And so we are grateful that you take the time to listen. I had somebody tell me a listener uh, said that they actually have us on repeat. So when they're on the treadmill at the gym, they just watch one episode after another, and every time they, they when they get to the end of our episodes, they go back to the beginning because they're always picking up something else from the episodes. So we're super grateful for that, um, and we're yeah, we're cool. excited to contribute at, at any level that we can. So we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we will be back next week with another interesting conversation for Inquiring Minds. But until then, Donna, take care. You too. Have a great day. 